Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you for joining me this week. Um, well, yesterday uh, was the 4th of July, and today we are, uh, many of us are celebrating, commemorating, or at, if we might not be celebrating, but we are at least commemorating uh, the 4th of July. And since the 4th of July, our America has the pretense of being founded on liberty and justice and fairness and equality. I want to do a special um, powerful points to ponder this week on what is the most important justice chapter, perhaps in the entire Bible. And that's Deuteronomy chapter 15. And Jesus will quote from Deuteronomy chapter 15, and he's going to pull out a statement that has often been misused to justify wealth, inequality, and the toleration of extreme poverty in our country. And um, it's a story that is found in Mark chapter 14, verses 1 through 10. And let me read it. And it says, It was now two days before Passover and the festival of unleavened bread, the leading priests and teachers of religious law were still looking for an opportunity to capture Jesus secretly and kill him. But during the Passover celebration, they agreed or the people, the people may riot. It says not during the Passover. So they didn't want to do it because Jesus was popular. That's what it's saying. And they might cause a riot if they arrest Jesus. Verse 3 says, meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard. That means it's expensive. It was imported from India. It says she broke open the jar, poured the perfume over his head. Some of those at the table were indignant. Why waste such expensive perfume, they asked. It could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor. So they scolded her harshly. But Jesus replied, leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you. Stop here. Now that, that statement, you will always have the poor among you, is literally pulled. Jesus is pulling that statement from Luke, uh, excuse me, from Deuteronomy chapter 15 and verse 11. And Deuteronomy 15 and verse 11 says, there will always be some in the land who are poor. So Jesus was talking about a passage in Deuteronomy which talks about the reality of poverty. And this verse has often been misused uh, to justify poverty. Well, the poor you will have with you always as though that is what God wills. Well, that's just like saying murderers and adulterers and fornicators you'll have with you always. But that's God being descriptive of a reality. That's not God being deep prescriptive of what God's intent is. God wants poverty eliminated. In fact, if you go back to verse 11 in Deuteronomy that we read where Jesus is pulling from Deuteronomy chapter 15 and verse 11, it says there will always be some in the land who are poor. So quite often this passage is often used um, by many to say that God is not concerned about the poor, that, that the poor are not a part of God's concern, which is totally unbiblical. The Greek word for poor that Jesus uses when he says the poor you have you always is the Greek word putkos, putkos. And putkos literally means those who don't have sufficient economic resources to live a, 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 a just, a good life. And because they don't have the resources, they have to do degrading things like beg, work in low wage jobs. Um, uh, are homeless. These are degrading things. So when Jesus says that the poor you will have with you always, uh, he's being descriptive and not being prescriptive. He's saying the reason we will have poor with us always is because we don't have good personal policies towards the poor, nor do we have good public policies toward the poor. Whenever you're reading the Bible, please always read the Bible through this lens, and that is 
that God is always on the side of the poor and God is challenging systems that oppress them. Please know that. So since God is on the side of the poor and we're supposed to be on God's side, then we should be on the side of the poor as well, advocating for them. And we're going to look at this because Jesus is going to be quoting from Deuteronomy 15 and we're going to pack this entire week, Deuteronomy 15. It's going to be a blessing to you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with me today for another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, I'd like to extend an invitation to you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Email us here at St. Stephen Church. New start. New start at ssclive.org. Thank you for being with me. Have a blessed day today, and I'll see you tomorrow. But until then, don't forget during COVID-19, stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, stay home. I'll see you later.